Hey you guys, Alexandra here and I am so, so pumped for today's video. This is one I've been wanting to do for a long time. You guys know how much I love, love, love my favorites videos and I love doing favorites and fails, but why not dedicate an entire video just to the fails? So that is what this video is gonna be all about. These are all products that I purchased from Sephora and for whatever reason, return to Sephora. Now, a couple of them somehow managed to still be in my collection because I missed the deadline on returning them. We're not gonna tell Steve that, okay? But uh, yeah, I wanted to definitely show you guys a few of these products and so you could kind of see what I'm talking about because you definitely don't wanna waste your money on these. Others are products that some people just like absolutely rave about, they love, and they just didn't work for me for whatever reason. So we're gonna get into all of that and so much more. So if you guys are ready, let's get into it. Now, before I get started, I, of course, do want to just put out there that we are all different in our skin type, skin tone, textures, makeup preferences, all the things, all the things, you know what I'm saying? So this is no shade to these products, the brands that created these products, or people that are currently using and loving these products. They just didn't work for me for whatever reason, and I'm going to get into why as we get into each product, as well as if I feel like that maybe it may work for someone else with a different skin type or tone, then I will explain why and who it may be good for. Again, this video is just for fun, you guys. With that being said, let's get into the first product, which I don't think, quite frankly, would work for anyone. <laughs> this was just so bad. So this was the NARS Orgasm Mini Eyeshadow Palette. And I mean, it looks like an absolutely gorgeous palette, as you can see. And as you can see, I have used it several times. I have tried everything to make this palette work. But it's just awful. It is god awful. As a matter of fact, I can honestly say that I have not seen a good review of this palette at all. And let me show you guys why. So these are the swatches of it. I mean, like you can barely, I mean, barely see it. And you guys just saw, I dug my fingers in there. Like <laughs> this was just bad. The worst part is if you have a really dark or deep skin tone, yeah. These, these ain't working for you. They're not working for you. And that is the one thing that has kind of been getting on my nerves with NARS and a few other brands like Hourglass. It's just their ranges are terrible. The other thing, you know, NARS here lately, they've been making a lot of really big palettes and it's just so unnecessary, which is why I really was drawn to this. Cause I was like, oh, this is like the perfect thing. Throw in your purse and go, you know, when you're traveling, you yeah, know, uh -uh. it's just, it, it's terrible. It blends right off your eyeballs like literally it does not stay it has no staying power it has no pigmentation and here's the crazy thing I even went and compared the ingredients of this palette to their normal eyeshadow palettes and I feel like the explanation lies in the ingredients because it's not their normal formulation at all I hate when brands do this so if you ever see this palette even at TJ Maxx do not waste your money. It is not worth it. I promise you. So the next thing is another palette, but this one is one that everyone loves. And this is one that I did return to Sephora. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Luxury Eyeshadow Palette in Pillow Talk. I know your mouth just dropped. You're like, what? Really? You returned that? Yes, I did. And let me tell you why. It was a pretty palette. So first off, I purchased this palette. Let me say this. It is a $53 palette for four, four, count them four ladies, four eyeshadows. Now, yes, Charlotte Tilbury is a bougie, expensive brand, but if I'm paying $53 for four eyeshadows, they better be the bomb. Like I'm saying, pat it on and blend it like one swipe. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, not the case. And not only that, but I was actually really surprised at the lacking of pigmentation that it had. The shimmers and the toppers in there just were really lackluster, very, very lackluster. The other thing is I had just purchased right before that, this palette right here, which is the Huda Beauty Naughty Palette or Naughty, is it? Yes, Naughty Nudes Palette. And let me say, all the colors that you see in that Charlotte Tilbury quad are in this palette plus so much more. And I got this palette during the Sephora VIB sale. So this ended up being less than the Charlotte Tilbury palette way more blendable, way more pigmented, 
way, way, way more worth it. And I ended up absolutely falling in love with this palette. And this was like my number one palette for 2020, quite frankly. And yeah, I was very, very quick. As soon as we got back from our trip from Gatlinburg, I returned that Charlotte Tilbury palette as quick as I could get to Sephora because I just, yeah, it was very lackluster, especially for the price point. So it just didn't work for me. Let's talk about this. This right here. This is the Tarte Maracuja Miracle Mist Setting Spray. Now, I'm not going to get real heavy into this product because so many people have already beaten it up, but it is it really is terrible. I don't know how on God's green earth they marketed this as a setting spray because <laughs> It literally, it's maracuja oil, which is what you use. I mean, do you guys see that? Do you see that? <laughs> like, this is what you use to remove your makeup as I fling it all over my camera. Yeah, this is not something that you would use to set your makeup. And if you do try to set your makeup with it, yeah, it's, it's going to run all over the place. Now, granted, I did use a lot, but I mean, that's just my point. Like, it's an oil, you know, it's an oil. It just melts everything off of your face, not set it on your face. So I, I don't <laughs> know what Tarte was thinking when they made this product. And obviously I still have it because I use it to remove my makeup. Honestly, that is really what I use this product for. And uh, it's, it's almost gone. I literally saved the last couple sprays to show you guys that on this video. So yeah, definitely save your money unless you need a good cheap makeup remover and you can see this at TJ Maxx or something, then snap it up by all means, but don't get it for a setting spray. No, uh -uh. These next two products are also eyeshadow palettes and I'm gonna group them together because I purchased them together and I return them together. You know what I'm saying? So these are both by Rare Beauty by Selena Gomez. And one was the Confident Energy Eyeshadow Palette. And the other one was the Magnetic Energy Eyeshadow Palette. And both of these eyeshadow palettes consisted of six shades, all shimmers. So there were no mattes in either one of these palettes. And I did know that going into the purchase. But I was like, you know what? I love shimmers. I use them regularly. As long as they're pigmented and they're blendable, I'm completely fine with that. But then I got them home. And let me just say, first of all, they were, and I'm saying like fallout central, like flaky, sparkles everywhere. And I mean, even if you use like a glitter glue or really sticky tacky base, you still had stuff all over your face by the end of the day of wearing them. The other thing that I didn't like is they really, really, really accentuated all of my creasing, all of my wrinkles, all the things, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I, I could not get those returned fast enough. And I'm actually surprised they didn't get a lot of reviews and the reviews that they do have are not really that great. So I'm not surprised at that. I'm surprised that they didn't get tried more. And I guess they didn't get tried more because of the reviews. I don't know. Now I do know that she has since released a newer palette that is a mix of mattes and shimmers. And I have heard that these shimmers are a lot better than these original two palettes. But the color story didn't really call to my name. And after my first experience, I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I didn't really want to like drag her like a few months ago because it seemed like anybody that had anything negative to say about anything Selena Gomez, you were getting it. So here we are. Here we are now. <laughs> Next, we have a product from Sol de Janeiro. This is the Glow Motions Glow Body Oil. And you guys, if you ever get a chance, definitely hop on a Sephora and my, read my review with this product. As a matter of fact, I'll pop it up right here for you guys. You can pause the video, read my review. It is hilarious, might I add, okay? But <laughs> the title is something like Sparkly Brown Butt Prints. Because that's essentially what happened with this product. Like, I really, really wanted to love this product. I love, and I mean love, love, love Sol de Janeiro in general. I have their shampoo, their conditioner, and their body spray, their bum bum cream. I mean, like, I have so many of their products. So I really was excited to try this one and really wanted to love it. But no. No, 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 no. This was just so bad. Like, it made my skin look absolutely amazing, but it flaked it peeled, it like balled up and it transferred so bad that when I sat down on the toilet seat, it literally left a brown sparkly butt print on the toilet seat, which my daughter was like, ew, 
cute, you know? And so I, I had to write a review. It was just, it was too fitting. But anyway, so <laughs> that is the story of the Sol de Janeiro Glow Motions Glow Body Oil. It's actually on sale right now at Sephora, or actually it says now it is no longer available. I can see why. I have heard that they have reformulated it since then, but again, not inclined to try it, especially considering I just got this one from the uh, e.l.f. order that I just made, the Retro Paradise Glow Up Body Oil. Amazing. Didn't transfer on the toilet seat. Didn't ball up. Didn't do any of the things. So I definitely think if Sol de Janeiro hasn't changed that formula yet, they need to. Next, let's talk about this right here. So this is the Milk Makeup Kush Triple Brow Pin Crown. Crown. Yes, I said crown, not crayon. Crayon? Is that how you guys say it? Crayon? I'm from Kentucky. Okay, leave me alone. <laughs> but nevertheless, this is a brow pin. And as you can see, it's got like one of those felt tip ends right there. And it's supposed to give you brow like strokes. And I mean, it's it's like so impossible <laughs> to get anything close to a brow like stroke. And I have really tried this product. Like if you go back at my other channel through a lot of my videos last year, I really tried to make this product work. Like really, really, really. Because the color itself matched my brows perfectly. But no, it just, it, it just didn't didn't work. And from what I've heard a lot of people talk about this product and other products like it with these felt tip pins, I mean, you have to be like, I mean, so, so light and precise. I don't, I don't even know if I, yeah, <laughs> I'm still not getting it to work. You guys, I'm just saying like, yeah, I don't have that kind of time in my life to spend on trying to get a brow product to work. So yeah, that was a no go. Speaking of milk makeup, let's talk about one of the products that I quite honestly feel like was one of the biggest gimmick products of 2020. This was the Milk Makeup Mini Day Plus Night Serum and Face Mask Set. So this set retailed for $39 and by the way, still is being sold on Sephora's website for $39. $9. Now this set included the mini melatonin overnight serum, the mini watermelon brightening serum, the watermelon brightening face mask, the mini melatonin overnight lip mask, and then the cooling water eye gel patches. One set. One set of cooling eye gel patches. Now as you can tell, I don't have those because that was the only thing in this kit that I really feel like was worth it. Everything else yeah, I feel like this was a total gimmick product. Let's start with the melatonin line. I know a lot of people said that they were not fans of this, myself included. So, you know, the actual serum, it's supposed to be a night serum. I mean, as you can see, I did use up half of it. I really tried to like this or get it to work. I do like that it's cooling, but here's the thing. I just don't feel like this is super hygienic. So like be putting it on your face at night, putting a cap back on, doing it again, like, yeah, not super hygienic. The melatonin lip mask, and again, I don't really understand the point of these because melatonin is something that like, you know, you would take or you actually already have in your system that helps you sleep at night. So are these supposed to make you sleepy? Cause they didn't do that either, you know? And the lip mask, this was like one of the worst lip masks. I mean, like the fact that I still have it and my teenage daughter did not take this stuff from me, should say everything because she normally steals everything from you guys, especially anything with melatonin. Like she loves taking the melatonin gummies if she can't sleep at night. And yeah, she was not a fan of this. Now the watermelon brightening serum, same thing. My skin didn't look any brighter after using it. And you guys know I hate watermelon, but I didn't mind trying this product because it doesn't smell like anything. It doesn't smell like watermelon. I don't know where the watermelon's at in this, but it's nowhere to be found, at least as far as the smell goes. Same with the watermelon brightening face mask. I mean, this product, like, I mean, again, you guys can see, I did in fact use it. It just wasn't, I mean, <laughs> you gotta kind of push down hard and it just wasn't a great product. So yeah, I wasn't a fan of these. I definitely don't think these are worth it by any means. If you see this at Sephora, even if it's on sale, run for your lives, just buy the cooling eye gel patches separately. Those are worth it by sure. I, I love those, but, but this stay away from for sure. 
Now these next two products are products that you all got to watch fail on camera because I did a whole video trying these out. These are the Bite Beauty Change Maker Foundation and Flexible Coverage Powder. And still to this day, this was the absolute worst foundation I have ever tried, hands down. And it honestly, to me, is because of the smell. If you guys remember when I tried this on, I kept saying it smelled like moldy berries. Smelled it. It smelled like moldy berries and because that's all I could smell. And it lingered. And I even like went in and had Steve and Noah like, hey, smell my face. What does it smell like? And they're like, Ugh. you know, like I could smell it. And what's funny is since doing that review and returning these products, I've actually read quite a few of other people's reviews and they've said the same thing. Some people said that they could smell it. Some people said that they couldn't. So I don't know if it was because I just had my son Liam. And so, you know, my senses were over heightened and over sensitive. So I don't know if it's, you know, that type of thing. But yeah, I will never forget the smell of that foundation. Now, aside from the actual smell, the foundation itself just did not look good on my skin. It was very, very drying. I tried the foundation by itself. I tried thinning it out. After I filmed that video, I tried making that product work because there were other people that had done reviews and they were raving about it. Now, let me just say that they did also get sent that free NPR for a review and I have not seen them since review those products or bring them up in a favorites video or anything else. So I do just want to throw that out there, but, but I, yeah, I just, I couldn't get these products to work. Not the powder, not the foundation, not together, not separately. It was just a bad deal all the way around. Speaking of cakey, this product right here was just an absolute cakey creasing mess, which is kind of funny because creaseless is literally in the name. This is by Benefit Cosmetics, the Boing Cakeless Full Coverage Concealer, which I think is, again, hilarious because it claims it's cakeless right in the actual name of the product. But no, I purchased this product and I actually was going to do a video about cakeless and creaseless concealers and this was one of the concealers that I had purchased because again it had cakeless right in the name yeah no no it was just a hot mess I mean and I don't know if I still may have the footage somewhere but yeah I mean it just absolutely accentuated every fine line wrinkle crease everything it just yeah not good not something that I could ever recommend and again couldn't return it to Sephora fast enough Next is a product that a lot of people absolutely rave about. And just for me, it just was not a great product. Just, and I think this is more of a texture thing. So this is the Milk Makeup Mini Hydro Grip Primer. And I didn't actually end up returning this to Sephora. Like I had actually even talked about this on a favorites and fails video. And one of my subscribers was like, oh my God, you can send it to me. I love that stuff. So I threw it in the mailbox and sent it to her. Shout out to you, girl. So I hope you're still enjoying that product. But yeah, it just did not work for me. And mainly because it was just too sticky. I don't like the sticky, sticky, heavy feeling on my face. The other thing is even trying to get over that and still trying to just test and use the product. Like my foundation didn't stick to it, which is kind of crazy because everybody's like, oh my God, it's so gripping. But for me, it really wasn't. It was just like my brush just like skipped and you really had to use a beauty blender to put your makeup on. Like there was no way around it because again, brushes just did not work because it was so sticky. So yeah, it just wasn't a product that was great for me. Just again, it's all about preference and not everything is <laughs> just a complete fail. Some people absolutely love that product. It just wasn't good for me. It's pretty much the same story with this next product. So this is by Huda Beauty and it's the Easy Bake Loose baking and setting powder and I got mine in the color pound cake and yeah this was super expensive and highly fragranced and didn't work like it was super cakey super thick just not my style of powder I really come to find through my makeup journey that I really like a very finely milled loose or even a, a compact setting powder but it's got to be finely milled like if it's super thick I'm not a fan of it. I'm just not a fan. And I've tried other, you know, loose setting powders, like for instance, this Halo one, like by e.l.f. This is amazing. Like this is absolutely amazing, but it is super, super finely milled. So for my dry skin, that's just what I need personally. Again, everybody's preferences are different. I know some people love that 
baking powder and that's really what it is is i don't even even call that a setting powder i would call that a full-on baking powder if you're going to bake your face that's what you want to use i don't really get into the whole baking thing it just accentuates lines and creasing and makes me look a lot older than what i really am so i'm good with all of that i just want to set my makeup and be good for the day so yeah i definitely return that to sephora as well Another product that I also returned to Sephora by Huda Beauty was the Water Jelly Hydrating Face Primer. Now, again, you guys know I love Huda Beauty. There are some of her products, her palettes that are just ride or die items in my makeup arsenal. But this particular product, it just didn't do anything for me. Like literally didn't do anything. It was just like putting any other moisturizer or any other primer, just any other item on my face. I didn't really see any kind of a difference, any kind of staying power, any kind of anything, especially to warrant a $33 purchase. So if I'm not really seeing any kind of a difference, and if you guys remember, I put the water jelly primer on one side, my usual moisturizer and stuff on the other. And yeah, it just, there was no difference, wore it all day. And it actually wore off the side with this primer a lot faster. So yeah, I was like, you're going back to Sephora. So that was the deal with that one. And the last product that we are going to talk about that I returned to Sephora is one that actually kind of hurt my heart and my feelings a little bit that it didn't work out for me because I really wanted this to work for me. So this is by Estee Lauder and this was the Futurist Hydra Rescue Moisturizer Foundation with an SPF of 45. And I've heard so many people just rave about this product and talk about how great their skin looked. And this was just basically their everyday usage foundation plus it's got the SPF. And I really like the Estee Lauder Double Wear. So I really thought that this product would be great for me but just for whatever reason, it did not look good on my skin. It did not look good at all. Like the color itself, like, and I tried even taking it back and getting a couple of different shades and they have very yellow undertones. So that was one thing. But even that aside, the shade match aside, just the actual product and how it laid on top of my skin, it didn't really like melt on. It felt very like cakey very full coverage my, made my skin look very very textured and you know I just wasn't a big fan of this product it just didn't do it for me and it really hurt because again I wanted to love it I wanted it to work but it just didn't for whatever reason so yeah had to return that one especially at a $45 price tag yeah sorry baby girl you had to go back so that is all I have for today's video. Let me know down below, what are some products that absolutely did not work well for you and you had to end up returning to Sephora? Would you guys like to see an Ulta version of this video? Cause I thought about doing that, but only if you guys would like to watch something like that. So definitely let me know your thoughts down below. Are any of these products products that you love and are your ride or dies? you know, maybe I'm using them wrong. Maybe there's something that I don't know. Again, talk to me down in the comment section. I will talk to you guys later. And until next time, see ya.